Hey, most videos, you know, down in the comments below, that's where community happens. But in this one, that is more, uh, more true th than any. Whether it's a word of encouragement for another, whether it's sharing something from your own experience and your own walk, the journeys and the, and the darkness that you have faced. You see, it's that time of year, and I know for myself, I've lost way too many people to suicide. From my senior drill instructor, Staff Sergeant Seipelt, to friends I grew up with, to soldiers and NCOs who've been in my charge. And I know that this time of year brings a little bit more of a heavy burden to many. Maybe it's because they themselves have lost somebody that was close to them. Maybe it's because they feel like they can't provide financially for themselves or for their family. Or maybe it's because somebody feels like they've deeply let somebody down in such a way that, that they don't feel like there's redemption or forgiveness. Those feelings of helplessness and hopelessness are extreme, they are real, and there are people around you right now who need you more than ever to check in. It could be your neighbor, it could be a widow, it could be somebody who's going through a challenging time. It could be somebody in your workplace. It's not the easiest thing to start talking to folks at work. But it's okay to, to find those moments where you can do something more than just water cooler conversations. Some ways may be to invite somebody out to, to get a to grab a bite to eat. There's something about breaking bread with somebody that opens up conversations. Maybe it's over a cup of coffee or tea if you're a Brit. But finding ways to have conversations, it could be with your own spouse, with a child, with a sibling, with a mother or a father. Like nobody, nobody is immune to the trials of life. Life has a way of smashing people in the face in such a way that it can it can be <coughs> extremely challenging to see the sunrise of tomorrow. To ever wonder how beauty can come from ashes. I know that I've faced some darkness in my own life. I'm wondering if my kids were going to pull through some medical messes that they've been in of having, you know, marriage, you're going to have some trials and, and adversity. Um, and, and after almost 30 years of marriage to Mrs. Stoker, like we've had some bad years and I just wonder sometimes why we don't have those conversations with, with other people. The social anxiety I, I think that a lot of people face, especially in modern day age of, of communicating b by text message or DMs or, or whatever, it, it creates this this barrier and it's a false barrier between us and other people and then when we come face to face we're, we're, we become socially awkward and these are these are awkward conversations to have to begin with but if you suspect that somebody may have it or be going through something you know you don't need to tiptoe around things Sometimes the, the best question to ask is, are you having thoughts of hurting yourself or somebody else? That is not an easy question to ask, to, to spit out of your mouth. But statistics tell us, those stories tell us, 
of those encounters where somebody said, because I was asked, I somehow felt a, a, a release of the burden I, I felt within me of not sharing. Because this person asked me, I gave an honest answer. And that honest answer led to potentially professional help, whether it was inpatient or outpatient counseling and therapy. Sometimes you may not want to, to, to come off that strong with that question because you're not, your gut's not 100% there that that's what's going on. And so again, that's when you just start talking story and use some open-ended questions of how that makes you feel and what do you think about this? What do you think that the result or the impact of what you're going through is going to be? And let the, let the other person share with you. Don't try to own and control the conversation. A lot of times we try to talk a lot as opposed to listening. But having a, a good shoulder to cry on, having a, a good ear that can hear a story, sometimes is enough to give a little bit of a little bit of hope, a little bit of redemption, a little bit of opportunity to see that there is trust in this person. And that person is you. And should you start to get those answers that, that th this could be more than what I'm trained, this could be more than what I'm capable of, of providing, then the, you may find that point in time when you need to ask those hard questions. And just because you're not a, a trained therapist, you don't have any formal training, doesn't mean that you can't have those conversations. It may mean that you don't have the tools to completely walk somebody through, and that's okay. What's important is finding those moments to have these conversations, and if something else is needed, then you reach out to other resources and people, people that they trust. And certainly, if somebody says that, yes, I have, have and am considering harming myself. Do not leave that person alone. Ask if there's somebody that they trust that they want to talk to, speak with. It could be that they have a, a pastor. It could be that they had their own therapist. It could be that 911 is the answer. It could be that the suicide prevention hotline is the answer. Ask if they'd feel comfortable calling on one of these people with you there with them. But if somebody has the means and they already have the will and the desire, they have tools, they have a plan, the last thing that you want to do is leave that person in a state where they could potentially go forward with, with what they've been planning. Of course, every situation is unique. With each and every single person that I've, that I've known that has taken their life, all their stories were different. All their reasons for going through with what they did was different. Not all of them gave classical warning signs. One, Sergeant Ajit Singh, just simply didn't show up to work. After the day, the day after having a pretty bad day at work. And so myself and a, and a peer, a battle buddy, we went to his house and knocked on his door and called 911 and, and broke into his house and, and went upstairs and, and found him on his bed, sitting with a helium bottle connected to a mask and literally just moments away before he was prepared to, to put that on and lay down looking at a picture of him and his kids. He got the help he needed that day. 
But come to find out years later, after he'd separated, he'd been successful in taking his own life. I knew another uh, young Marine. Hey, bud. Uh, who was in uh, training. And his father bought him a, a brand new Mustang. And well, he totaled it and he committed, he committed suicide and he left a note saying he didn't have the courage to tell his own father. Think about that. He didn't want to let his father down over a car. And this is why it's so important to have these conversations when, when somebody has a, a triggering event or moment, which could be anything from a, losing a job, having problems with investments, breaking up with somebody, a vehicle accident, especially uh, if something was a gift, if, if people lose something that was precious to them. Maybe he was losing a, a child to cancer. Or losing a, a sibling in a vehicle accident, losing a parent. These tr triggering events, what, what can seem insignificant to us, could be <coughs> absolutely the most important thing to this other person. That's why we don't tread lightly when somebody's going through a challenging time. team just I, I just wanted to, to have this conversation with y'all and to hopefully get some some comments down below again if you are going through a challenging time and you have nobody that you know or trust to lean on to send me an email at stochromatic at gmail.com and I, I i will reach out to you leave a comment down below if there's something that you would like to share whether it's about something that you're going through now, something that you know somebody went through, or if you simply want to respond to somebody's comment. Building each other up and having a community that lifts one another up, that supports each other, that is authentic. That's the kind of communities that we need most in our lives. And here on, on, on a channel is one thing, but I'm going to encourage you to reach out to those that are around you. Just check in on them. Maybe it's somebody you used to work with. Maybe it's somebody you used to work for. Don't ever be afraid to check up. We need each other now more than ever. Team, I appreciate you guys. Until then... You stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked. Team, if you want to master your craft and develop your tactical virtue, make sure you subscribe to the channel and click that notification bell so that you can stay up to date on future content. Consider becoming a channel member. It's going to give you exclusive access to content not available to anybody else. I appreciate you guys. Until then, you stay out there, you keep grinding, and you stay stoked.